Good afternoon, and many thanks to all of you to be here. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to introduce you Professor Claudio Procesi from Sapienza University of Rome. Claudio Procesi is one of the greatest mathematicians of this century. It is not possible for me to give here just a simple list of his scientific contributions in different branches of mathematics. A part of his scientific activity is described on the text of his conference titled A Life with Algebra that you can find on the internet. I express to Professor Claudio Procesi many thanks for his kindness in accepting my invitation to give a talk in the lab series of seminars. Please, Professor Procesi. Non si sente? Momento. Succede. Deve attivare il microfono. Deve attivare il microfono. E infatti... È disattivato voi. Adesso si sente? Benissimo, va bene. Scusate. Ah, ok. Well. Okay, thank you very much, but uh, I, do, I do not recognize myself in such <laughs> greatness. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, unfortunately, here it says that my internet connection is unstable. I hope it will be stable. Okay, it's a pity that uh, we cannot uh, do in presence uh, because uh, Urbino is a nice city and perhaps uh, next time we'll be in presence. So, uh, fundamental theorems of invariant theory. Fundamental because uh, there are foundations of uh, a very large theory. And, uh, okay. Uh, in the, the, the name comes from Hermann Weil in his book, uh, The Classical Groups. So, Hermann Weil, of course, was uh, uh, already doing a uh, a lot of work in quantum mechanics and uh, discovered the relationship between quantum mechanics and group theory. And uh, there introduces these uh, 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 classical groups. And so this is uh, related to the study of invariance uh, of uh, se several variables, vector variables and dual forms variables. So this book, in fact, uh, is, is a sort of a, uh, a milestone in which revived invariant theory, which uh, had been killed by the solution of the basic theorem by Hilbert. So the word invariant, of course, in mathematics appears uh, everywhere, but we are, use it in a very specific uh, form. So we have a group of linear transformations of a finite dimensional vector space which could be, of course, also the group of all linear transformations or just a subgroup of the group of linear transformations. And then this group acts automatically also on the space of polynomial functions on the vector space by this formula, which uh, I hope to point out with a pointer. And uh, uh, then an invariant is a function which is invariant under this uh, action of this group which means just that when you apply any element of the group to the function, you get the same function. And uh, the, these functions form a subalgebra and they are sort of a basic object of study, which were introduced in the middle of the 19th century <laughs> by several people, in particular Cayley. So I will restrict to a very specific case, although in, Probably the, the theory should, can be developed in more general cases, but it was it also already this case, it's uh, quite uh, complex. So uh, here, the group is the full linear group of all these transformations on the vector space V, but then uh, it acts on uh, the following space. You, you take the direct sum of several copies of the vector space V and several copies of the dual space V of this time. And then this, 
the first fundamental theorem describes the generators of, of the invariants of this action. And the second fundamental theorem describes the relations among these uh, generators. So generators mean generators in the sense of algebra, the polynomial uh, functions in these generators give all the invariants and relations are relations among these polynomial functions. Okay, similar theorems hold for other classical groups, but I will not uh, talk about. <clears throat> so here I start with the first fundamental theorem and which appears in several different ways. And uh, at the end, I will uh, describe uh, a new way in which it appears. Uh, so th these other ways are quite old. Uh, they, they are maybe almost a hundred years old. And is uh, very new. <clears throat> so uh, the conventions are that uh, the, the co-vectors are written with Greek letters, the vectors with Roman letters. And the formula that I use is uh, that uh, the action uh, of a form on a vector or is just the evaluation of the form on the vector. And the dual action is given by inverse transpose, which uh, in intrinsic notation is this one, <laughs> is this uh, notation. So uh, in other words, what happens is that if you transform at the same time, the form and the vector, then this, be, this function, which is a function of the vector and of the form is invariant. And then the basic fundamental theorem is that uh, the previous function, so this uh, pairing, the pairings between uh, uh, forms and vectors generate all invariants of this uh, uh, representation. So this is the theorem. Now, there is the first remarkable fact, which is the basic, is uh, the basis of the uh, discussion in Hermann Weyl's book, <laughs> is the fact that uh, this uh, theorem is equivalent to, to uh, another theorem, which is called Schurweil duality, or at least this is the beginning of Schurweil duality. And this means that you take the linear operators on the power of a vector space, which commute with the diagonal action of the linear group. And then this uh, uh, algebra is generated by the elements of the symmetric group. So the two actions are this. This is the diagonal action of the linear group on the tensor. So it acts on each, on each component of the tensor by the same operator G. So, and then the action of the symmetric group, instead it, it, it's a permutation action of the tensor factors. So these two actions are clearly commute with each other. And the first fundamental theorem says that not only they commute with each other, but the two algebras that they span are each the complete the centralizer or the complete set of elements which compute, which commute with the other. And of course, uh, together with the fundamental theorem, we have a second fundamental theorem, which describes the relations among the invariants, among the invariants, uh, uh, among the generators of the basic in, uh, of the invariant. So uh, then it is better to write down in a more concrete uh, form. So you write, uh, basically the idea is that you write vectors as columns of a matrix, of a matrix and uh, forms as row of a matrix. And then the pairing between uh, uh, forms and uh, vectors is just uh, matrix multiplication. So uh, in, in this form, uh, the, uh, the representation of the set the, is the set of pairs of matrices. This uh, matrix uh, D times H and D K times C, a, a matrix uh, of uh, the linear group acts on this pair by this form. Uh, this is just uh, the matrix uh, uh, trans um, interpretation of the previous uh, uh, of the, the previous object. Uh, and then, of course, uh, one sees that multiplication uh, is invariant. And then, uh, as I said, the, the entry, the, this basic invariance of multiplication of a form by a vector are the entries of the product matrix. 
And then the image of this map is the variety of matrices of rank lesser equal to the dimension of the vector space. <clears throat> and then, of course, it's known that uh, a matrix has a certain rank, if uh, has a rank lesser equal than D, if and only if the uh, determinants of the D plus one minus vanish. On the other hand, uh, the second fundamental theorem says something much deeper and says that. Uh, any relation uh, which uh, holds for uh, uh, on the space of functions of, of matrices, uh, which holds on matrices of rank less equal to D, uh, any such uh, uh, relation is in fact uh, a linear combination of the determinants of all these uh, minors. So on one end, we know that so in uh, commutative algebra, we say that. Uh, that the determinants of the d plus, d plus one plus d plus one minus of a matrix uh, x of variables is a, a prime ideal. This is basically the interpretation in terms of uh, uh, Hilbert, Nussel, and such. So this, uh, this is just the first of a very long list of ideas and theorems on, on special singularities, because uh, if you look at, uh, the, the varieties of uh, matrices of rank less than equal than a certain number, then there's a singular variety in, uh, in <clears throat> with the singularities in the matrices of one less uh, rank. And this, this particular singularities appear uh, often in uh, geometry. And uh, these two first and uh, second fundamental things have uh, implications in the uh, geometry, which at the moment I cannot uh, discuss. <laughs> so then, uh, of course, uh, there is a second setting of the first uh, fundamental theorem. That is uh, uh, the, the algebra of the symmetric group, which acts uh, on uh, tensor space. And then in this case, this, the relations uh, describe the, ker the kernel of this mapping. So here you have the full algebra, group algebra, the symmetric group. And here you have its mapping in this endomorphisms. And this uh, kernel is non-zero as soon as the dimension of the vector space is strictly less than the tensor power. And then in this case, this, uh, the kernel is the two-sided idea of, of this group algebra, this uh, non commutative algebra, generated by an anti-symmetrizer. Again, the fact that uh, the anti-symmetrizer vanishes is a basic fact of, an, of, uh, of linear algebra. But the fact that uh, the kernel is the ideal so that uh, this anti-symmetrizer generates uh, the entire relation is a, a non-trivial result, which is equivalent to the second fundamental theorem, which I uh, mentioned before. For uh, which is formulated in the other way. Now, what happens? So, okay, so here the uh, okay the symbols are epsilon sigma is the sign of the permutation. So, uh, let's see. this is the anti-symmetrizer, the sum of all the permutation of the subgroup with p plus one elements, and uh, the sign is uh, here. So, the, the, okay. There is still a, a third way in which the fundamental theorems appear. In this case, uh, as basic representation, we take the direct sum of H copies of the matrix algebra, which are, one can write uh, instead of matrix algebra as the space of linear operators uh, on V. Of course, it's the matrix algebra in a, in a given basis. And uh, here the action is conjugation. So uh, some simultaneous conjugation of uh, under the linear group. Uh, now, uh, there is a trick uh, to study, uh, in, at least in characteristic zero, there is a trick to, to study this invariance, which is called the Aronov method. Uh, this is uh, a method of uh, 19th century algebra, uh, in which you take a function which is homogeneous to some degree in some variable, vector variable, you polarize it, you make it multilinear in a certain set of variables. And this means that one can uh, study 
però this invariance by restricting to study the more collinear invariants. And then uh, the, the, this is a, a simple remark that the multilinear invariants uh, are the invariant of the dual of the of the stencil space, and they are given uh, by the endomorphisms of the stencil space. They are identified, not given. Right? They can be identified with the with the uh, this uh, endomorphism algebra, which we know uh, is. Uh, uh, the, the span of the symmetric group. So this means that uh, these invariants are, the, are spanned by these functions which are indexed by a symmetric group. So here, uh, uh, an element of a symmetric group, which acts uh, on, on tensors, which, which uh, you, you multiply this, this is an endomorphism of uh, of uh, is an element of this algebra, this thing, by what I said before, you compose it with this tensor product of, of uh, matrices, which is uh, again an element here, take the trace, and here you have an invariant. And then the fact is that uh, <clears throat> if you decompose into cycles this perturbation, you have that this invariant is a product uh, of the traces of the monomials associated uh, to these cycles. So this formula, which this is a basic formula, transforms uh, information on the permutations, so the permutation decomposed into cycles, into uh, information on the corresponding invariant, which has this formula in which monomials uh, in the matrix variables. So here you see appear a bit of non-commutative algebra. <clears throat> Then, of course, one, oops, sorry. Uh, one should also look at, uh, uh, at uh, a, a more general uh, algebra, which appears, uh, already appears uh, in uh, several papers, for instance, in elasticity, in elasticity theory, for uh, when V is a three dimensional space, the, the actual space. In, uh, so there are some tensors. Uh, you know, of elasticity theory, which uh, are equivalent with respect to orthogonal group. Uh, so uh, th this uh, object appears, and uh, the this um, oh, I'm sorry, oh, this this is complicated. This uh, uh, non commutative algebra is formed by these maps, a map uh, which maps uh, matrices. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> And then there are linear combinations of uh, these expressions. So the expressions which are here are, are uh, uh, like uh, the expressions uh, 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 of, uh, of the traces, except that there is a, a monomial of uh, matrix variable. So you have, you, you have that, that this function, which is obtained uh, from these matrix variables uh, and produces matrices and in an equivalent way, is some kind of non commutative polynomial in these matrix variables multiplied by invariance. Now, uh, in order to understand uh, this uh, fairly complicated object uh, of uh, <clears throat> non commutative uh, uh, algebra polynomial maps, once uh, a an idea from uh, um, uh, universal algebra. That is uh, the idea of uh, algebra with rays and free algebra with rays. So I'm sorry, this uh, may be something you're not so uh, acquainted with, but uh, uh, the, you know, you, of course you know associative algebras, but then uh, a trace, uh, one can define a trace in associative algebra, as a map, as a linear map, which satisfies uh, these axioms. So the, the, your internet connection is unstable. Okay, so this axiom tell us uh, essentially that uh, the image of this uh, trace is a central subalgebra called the trace algebra. 
and that the map space is linear. And uh, the definition is uh, in the approach of universal algebra in the sense that we have the usual operations of algebra and then you have this further operation, which is called the trace. And then these algebras we trace for mechanical like, uh, associative algebras or commutative algebras, you have the category of algebras with trace because you also have maps of which are trace compatible homomorphisms. And then one has the idea of a free algebra with trace. So this means uh, the symbolic calculus on algebras with trace. This is uh, essentially uh, a very sophisticated uh, form of what uh, we learned uh, in the uh, Scuola Media, cal calcolare con le lettere, calcolo letterale, computing with the letters. So, so here we have to compute with symbols, although the symbols are, uh, behave in a, in a more complicated way. Okay, so what is the free algebra we trace? The free algebra we trace is the usual free algebra, the algebra fx, uh, 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 this means the, the monomials uh, in the variables are non commutative monomials. And then you have to add uh, these symbolic elements, uh, which are called traces, uh, which uh, are just defined symbolically as uh, the, the trace m, we denote the class of a monomial, sorry, the class of a monomial up to cyclic equivalence. So here we have this symbolic uh, algebra, this big symbolic, infinite dimensional symbolic algebra. It's like polynomials, but non commutative polynomials, and uh, moreover, also with this trace operation. And then the second fundamental theorem consists in understanding which one of these symbolic uh, expressions vanish identically when evaluated in d by d matrices. And So these are called the trace identities, and they form a, an ideal of this uh, uh, infinite dimensional object, uh, which is an algebra. And uh, this is a, a special ideal, uh, which is called a, a T ideal, which means that when, when you substitute uh, a variable with uh, any formal expression in an element of the ideal, you still have an element of the ideal. And this is a trivial fact, but it's the basic fact of, uh, of um, uh, the, the theory of uh, identities in algebra. So we have to understand which are the formal expressions in matrix variables which vanish identically when you fix the size of the matrix variable. So if you do not fix the size, then there are no identities so in the sense that uh, every formal expression is non zero when evaluated on matrix to large size. But when you fix the size, then there are identities, and the, the, uh, these identities, uh, in fact, uh, as we will see, are consequences of a basic identity, which is the Cayley Hamilton identity, which is the usual uh, uh, Cayley Hamilton theorem for, um, for matrices, but formulated in a, in a symbolic way. So I have to explain you how you interpret the, KDR, the characteristic polynomial symbolically. You have a matrix, you have the characteristic polynomial, and then the Cayley Hamilton theorem says that the matrix satisfies the characteristic polynomial. And you have to do this all in, in symbolic way so that uh, this characteristic polynomial looks like a trace identity. So we have to use these formulas, which define these elements the sigma i x in terms of the elements of the formal elements trace of x to the j. And here at the bottom of this page, you see some uh, examples of sigma two is one half trace x x two. These are exactly, in fact, uh, the formulas which uh, uh, connect uh, the elementary symmetric functions with the Newton power sums in uh, the theory of well, symmetric functions. That is the coefficients are in terms 
of its eigenvalues. And since the trace of the power of matrix is the Newton function in the eigenvalues. Okay. So then you can define uh, this uh, formal expression, this formal Katie Hamilton polynomial in this way by uh, mimicking the characteristic polynomial. And here in the bottom of the page, you can see some examples of what comes out. Uh, uh, they, they are, uh, it's a polynomial of D, D this uh, formal DKD index uh, with coefficients, which are uh, these expressions in the traces of the of x and its powers, which are this element sigma i, which I defined before. Okay. Now, the Kelly Hamilton theorem says that this formal polynomial vanishes when evaluated in d by d matrices, or that it is a trace identity of d times d matrices. So this means that if you take this expression here, you substitute it for x, a three, for instance, you look at CX, CH3, you substitute for x a three by three matrix, you apply the usual trace, this is identically zero. But of course, this is not identically zero in uh, four by four matrices. In four by four matrices, you need uh, the CH4, the, the next uh, uh, KD formal expression. So the, the deep uh, uh, KD Hamilton expression, it vanishes identically on D by D, on D, by D matrices. <clears throat> and then the rising uh, theorem is that uh, or if you have any uh, uh, relation in any number of variables, which vanishes identically on D by D matrices, then this is a formal consequence of the Kelly Hamilton identity and the fact that trace one is equal to D. So trace one in the symbolic algebra is just a symbol. And uh, when you evaluate it in D by D matrices, of course, this one is D. So th these uh, two identities are obvious for, for uh, D by D matrices. But then what is not at all obvious is that any other formal identity is actually obtained from this by the idea of T ideals. So by substituting variables with any other expressions and then multiplying and summing this expression. So uh, this, uh, in fact, uh, is, uh, is the first of a long list of ideas of, and theorems in non-commutative algebra. And uh, I built a, a theory of Kelly Hamilton algebras, which uh, would uh, require quite a lot of uh, different uh, discussions, which I cannot go into. But uh, there are some preprints in, on the archive if you're interested. So uh, this uh, polynomial, uh, uh, as I say, the, the classical method of polarization uh, means that you can transform if a, a, a polynomial of some degree d into something multilinear in d variables. And this is the expression. The expression uh, when you polarize the uh, Kelly Hamilton identity, you get uh, the, the following expression which uh, in, in, the, in the bottom, you have the example for D equal to, which is uh, the polarized form of the Kelly Hamilton for two by two matrices, which means uh, again, that if you take uh, two two by two matrices, X1, X2, then you have this expression X1, X2 plus X2, X1, minus three, X1, X2 and so on, which vanishes identically. And you can see that this is an interpretation of the anti-symmetrizer in the D plus one uh, elements. In the case of D equal to the anti-symmetrizer on three elements. So the sum of the symmetric of the six elements of the symmetric group uh, in three variables. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, maybe I've been a little too quick, but uh, I wanted to discuss the new uh, theorems because uh, this the last theorem is uh, okay the first fundamental theorem in the first form 
is, a, is probably more than 100 years old. And, and in the last form of a matrix variable is uh, due to myself and Hans Mirklov, where it's already now at least 40 years old. So uh, then I want to thank tensor polynomials, uh, which uh, appear in uh, a new discipline in mathematics. Uh, that is quantum information theory. But I'm not an expert at all in quantum information theory, but uh, uh, the fact is that uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, is an object of study in quantum information theory. So we want to generalize the previous problem, which was to study polynomial maps from capables of matrices to matrices. Instead, we study polynomial maps from capables of matrices to a tensor power of uh, matrices. And we want to understand which one of these polynomial maps are equivalent under the conjugation action under the linear group. Here, using the rational numbers because everything is defined over the rational, and it's enough to understand the situation with the rational. The, the situation of the complex number is just uh, obtaining by introducing complex coefficients. So you have this uh, polynomial maps. Polynomial first means that each coordinate is a point in the board. And uh, <clears throat> these maps form a non commutative algebra because uh, the target space. The power of matrices is itself an algebra. Therefore, when you multiply two such uh, polynomial maps, you get the polynomial map of the same type. And, and among these uh, non commutative polynomials in this that we call tensor variables, that is, you, you take a fact and transform it into an element of, of the tensor power by tensoring that by the identity on the left and on the right. So you have these matrix variables, and you have uh, these uh, tensor polynomials, which are just uh, non-commutative polynomials in these tensor variables. They correspond uh, when the variables may be a Hermitian matrices to uh, protocols uh, in quantum information theory. So this notion uh, was probably not considered by algebraist, but. Uh, Somehow I got into contact with this young physicist uh, who introduced me to these uh, 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 ideas. Uh, and uh, this is a very rich theory, which, uh, which I'm basically ignorant. But uh, the idea is that uh, a basic object uh, is the tensor product of the endomorphism algebra. In fact, uh, maybe you take the the, the emission part in, in, in quantum information theory. But in any case, from a symbolic point of view, it's uh, the tensor power of the endomorphism of the vector space, which is uh, the object of study. Of course, uh, maybe at the beginning you study for B, the two dimensional space, so that you have this uh, bits, uh, the Q bits. Uh, then, but of course, uh, as soon as, even if B is two dimensional, the endomorphism of V is four dimensional. And then when you take the tensor power, you get uh, spaces of dimension which are increasingly growing. And this, the structure is, is even for V or dimension two is quite complex. So uh, the, the idea is the following. You start uh, with a four-way idea. You take uh, the free algebra and uh, you evaluate the variables in an algebra. And, and then of course you have the vanishing elements uh, uh, in the evaluation. And then this map uh, defines also an evaluation in, in the tensor power. So uh, essentially when you evaluate uh, tensor polynomials, so you are evaluating an element uh, of the uh, tensor power of the free algebra. And, and then you have, will have uh, the tensor identities uh, which are vanishing in the, uh, as soon as you evaluate. So 
even so if you do it for matrices it's already an interesting problem to understand which uh, poly non commutative polynomials in the tensor variables are in fact identical in zero and this is a very complicated problem which uh, there is a, a small paper with Felix Huber, which I published uh, last year. So then in the end, we have three type of objects to consider. So this tensor polynomial maps, so just uh, the, the non commutative polynomials in this tensor variable, which are induced by these evaluations of the free algebra. Then you, you may add uh, to this expression also the traces, and you have the trace tensor polynomial maps. And then, in fact, all these maps belong to a more general class of maps. That is the equivariant tensor polynomial maps. That is the polynomial maps which are equivalent under conjugation. And this uh, is sort of the last object of study in my work, and, uh, which uh, uh, I, I would like to sketch uh, what, what happens uh, in this case. So, of course, uh, these three objects, uh, you see, I, uh, all non commutative algebras, each one a bigger algebra. The tensor polynomial maps are a non commutative algebra. The trace tensor polynomial maps are larger non commutative algebra. And the equivalent tensor polynomial maps are even larger polynomial algebra. Uh, um, non commutative algebra. And the first thing is to discover what is the formula for, for equivalent tensor polynomial maps, because it, it contains all the previous things, but it contains also some uh, new information, which comes from the symmetric group, as we will see in a moment. So the idea to understand uh, such an equivalent map is quite simple, actually. You take a uh, one of these equivalent uh, polynomial maps, and uh, uh, with by with by with uh, power of matrices, and to this you can associate a scalar polynomial map, but now in k plus n variable by just defining it by the following formula. I hope that the, the, the transparency doesn't. Uh, okay, this is the formula. Uh, and uh, this formula, actually, if you know this uh, invariant, then uh, since the trace form is non degenerate, this determines completely the, the equivalent polynomial map. But now we know the formulas of all invariant uh, in any number of variables. And they are, were given uh, in some previous transparencies as the products of traces of monomials in the variables which appear. In this case, the variables which appear are the variables X and Y. So you take some monomials in the variable X and Y, you take the trace and you take another monomial, you take the trace, you multiply, and you get the general uh, form of this invariant TH associated to the equivalent polynomial map. And then what do you get? Well, uh, if you take uh, just one thing like this, then basically what you have, you have some monomials in n, nj in the variable x, and some monomials which contain the variable y, and, and then the variable x. So, uh, and then you have this, that uh, your constructed invariant has this form. Oop. I am unable to, to make this stable. Okay. So, therefore, what you get is that uh, the invariant, uh, the equivalent map, is uh, this uh, given by this formula, in which you have a tensor product of monomials. You have uh, the a product of these coefficients or traces. And then you have also an element of the symmetric group. Because an element of the symmetric group is uh, an invariant element, and therefore, can be thought of as a constant polynomial map. Uh, the, among the various polynomial maps, which are equivalent, there are the constant polynomial maps, which are spanned by the symmetric group. 
And, and so this is a very fundamental computer for this uh, tensor valued uh, invariant. Uh, invariant. Uh, now, this uh, fundamental theorem can be formulated in more technical form, which means that uh, you know, these symbolic expressions, which uh, the symbolic expressions here, uh, this kind of symbolic expression, can be thought uh, of as, a, as, a, as just a, an algebra of symbolic uh, formulas, which then will be evaluated into matrices. And as such an algebra, this is just the tensor power of the symbolic uh, trace algebra. And then you have this uh, uh, symmetric group, which uh, actually has this commutation relation with, uh, with the tensor. So that's why we call it the twisted group algebra. So this twisted group algebra is the, is the algebra of symbolic maps, uh, which uh, can then be evaluated uh, into uh, D by D uh, matrices. So this is what already I said, uh, that uh, the elements of the symmetric group uh, are uh, the, the constants, which are evaluated by the formula in which the symmetric group acts uh, on tensor power. Now this, uh, it turns out that, uh, that the usual uh, trace operation you know, functions can be defined also as, at the symbolic level. Uh, there is such a, a formula, although I don't want to go too much into it. And so this is an algebra we trace. And uh, then uh, essentially what we are trying to understand are the evaluations of this algebra we trace in uh, uh, matrices and to understand which of these uh, formal expressions vanish uh, identically when uh, evaluated by matrices. Again, if D is left uh, uh, open, uh, not uh, bound, then uh, each one of the things, not, none of these formal expressions will vanish identically. But uh, as soon as we fix D, then uh, this will happen. So, of course, uh, special cases where when you have uh, n equal one, uh, just matrices and not tensor power of matrices, you have uh, the, the, just the free algebra uh, with trace. And uh, if n equals zero, you just have the, the trace algebra. So, I, again, I said uh, the second fundamental theorem consists in describing the relation. So, the formal expressions which vanish when evaluated into matrices. Uh, again, uh, by this classical method, one can restrict to multilinear relation. And then one discovers uh, some very interesting uh, relations, which uh, will then prove that they generate all relations. So, what does one do? One starts with, again, always with the same thing, with the fact that uh, the anti symmetrizer on uh, uh, D plus one elements uh, when uh, the vector space has dimension B, uh, as dimension uh, D uh, vanishes, or equivalently that the D plus one exterior power of V is equal to zero. And from this, of course, one gets this basic identity for D by D matrices. Now the trick is that uh, this matrix variables D one, D, D, D plus one, can be used uh, for uh, understanding uh, tensor valued uh, maps by transforming this into an identity for a tensor valued map, which means uh, that the, you choose uh, the, some of these variables to be the y variables uh, which, which appear in the tensor uh, in, for, in the previous form. Yeah? Which, uh, now I, I don't think, but, so, uh, but I think I had it uh, before. So uh, the idea is that uh, this, uh, the fact that this vanishes means that the trace of this expression times the sensor product of uh, further variables is identical. This is just uh, obtained by the, from the anti symmetrizer. 
Now, we have already seen uh, in uh, some special cases uh, this identity, uh, and that is uh, uh, for k equal d, this is the polarized form of the k diameter identity. For k equal d plus one, the polarized expression of the formula which expresses the trace of uh, x d plus one in terms of the traces of the um, powers uh, less than d. And, and finally, for k equal zero, this is just the, that the fact that uh, the anti-symmetrizer vanishes uh, as operator. Now, now we see for some explicit formulas in the in the other cases. So here uh, you should concentrate on the formula. So for instance, uh, the first one, uh, this uh, sigma one two x. Uh, this is one minus uh, one uh, the transposition one two composed by this expression x tends to one plus one tends to x minus tends to x, and this is identical to zero for two by two matrices. For three by three matrices, I give you two, I give you the two new uh, thing. One is uh, the anti symmetrizer on uh, three elements uh, multiplied by this uh, uh, x tends to one tends to one plus one tends to x tends to one and so on, which is again identical to zero. The other one is the anti symmetrizer on two elements multiplied by this other more complicated formula. And, uh, okay, I hope. So you should really look at the last formula of the transparency, which uh, tells you what or suggests what is. Uh, the, the general formula for uh, for such a uh, uh, map. So this is an identity, this one, which could an identity for three by three matrices with values tensors of uh, two two tensors of matrices. This vanishes identity, and uh, in general, in order to make the construction, you first have to Consider the following symbols: the the, the, the these symbols in this formula. Uh, whenever I try to push this thing, it, it gives you okay. This uh, symbols here, which comes of uh, all the ways in which uh, you can uh, um, place uh, this. Uh, uh, powers so that they sum the sum of the exponents uh, add to i and there are n of them and then uh, here there are some examples of, of uh, this formula this is this is the most complicated one uh, in which you you can put uh, three zero zero in three, in three different ways then two one zero and then one 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 in one in one way and then the there is this uh, identity, this is a new tensor identity, which vanishes identically for uh, when evaluated in d times d matrices. And, and this, uh, of course, uh, uh, here you have uh, the, an anti symmetrizer, and here you have something which resembles uh, a Kelly Hamilton polynomial in the sense that when n is equal to one, it is in fact. The Kelly Hamilton polynomial. This is a kind of, I, define, I call it an entrance of Kelly Hamilton polynomial. So the theorem, on the other hand, uh, is that uh, this, as in the case of matrices, any relation can be deduced as a consequence of this t, uh, d plus 2 basic relation. <laughs> so, in what sense uh, one can deduce? All the relations. Well, of course, uh, when you have uh, tensor polynomials, uh, you can substitute the variables, but you can also multiply by tensor by tensor uh, polynomials. Uh, tensor polynomials multiply by tensor product. So these are the rules of deduction which are, can be formalized in a way. You say that uh, you, you give the notion of t-tensor idea. So what is a t-tensor idea? 
the sense of idea is a sequence of ideals in this uh, uh, symbolic algebra for every n, such that there's, each one is stable under substitutions. Is a, the first formula. The second formula says uh, that there is a that they are stable when you tensor multiply them. And then you can say that uh, a T tensor ideal is generated by a subset if it is a minimum T tensor ideal for them. And uh, so this is a, a notion which uh, is uh, generalizing. Sorry, there is a noise. Nobody's working. This is it. Sorry, I tried to stop the noise. Uh, so, uh, but there is a, a still uh, another operation which one can uh, do on, ten, on uh, tensor uh, uh, polynomials. That is the partial trace. And under this partial trace, uh, you have uh, uh, that uh, an element of the n tensor power maps to the n minus one tensor power. You contract by trace the last uh, variable. And this actually can be transformed into a symbolic uh, partial trace uh, on uh, the symbolic algebra, which is compatible with the evaluation in two matrices. And then uh, the remarkable formula is this, that uh, when you specialize uh, the trace of one to be D, then uh, you have the, the, the partial trace of uh, one of these symbolic expressions uh, of, of degree K is zero. If you multiply this uh, uh, symbolic expression of degree K uh, by one N minus one tensor X, then you get the symbolic uh, expression of degree K plus one up to this constant factor. So I recall what are these uh, symbols, uh, 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 sigma uh, S or whatever, K D X, I, mean, I call you, what are they? Okay, I, just a second. Okay, this is the formula. So if you take this thing, you multiply it by one to the uh, N tensor X and you take the trace, you get the next one. So, this is a remarkable, a rather remarkable formula. And uh, so, what you can say that this is another, uh, still another rule of, of, uh, uh, of deducing formulas, because you can deduce everything from the, from the anti-symmetrizer. Again, you can formalize it so in the sense of uh, of uh, T ideals. You you say that uh, in a, a, C, a, T tensor, a, a T tensor ideal is a T tensor <laughs> little T ideal if it is also stable under this special trace. And then the final remarkable fact is that so you can sort of go to the very be beginning of tensor symmetry. That is that the anti-symmetrizer is uh, identically zero. And you can say that uh, all the relations are generated in this sense by this idea of T tensor ideal and T tensor T ideal. They're all generated by the basic anti-symmetrizer. So this is the basic law the of, uh, of uh, tensor symmetry. Uh, that the anti-symmetrizer in D plus one elements of for a vector space of dimension D vanishes. And of course, uh, that the trace of one is equal to D. Out of these two information, using this rather complicated uh, uh, machinery, you can deduce all other uh, identities in any number of, of variables uh, that, uh, that you have. 
Um, okay, so I think I'm basically finished. Uh, I only make a remark about uh, the technical, a, a simple technical tool uh, arising from the symmetric group. Since uh, everything is dominated by a symmetric group and the formulas are all deduced from the formulas of the symmetric group, uh, interpreted in, in different way by the formulas which I gave. And uh, the, the, the tool is this, uh, is a, an elementary fact on uh, permutations. So you take uh, the permutation of uh, one, two M and you decompose it into two disjoint sets. And then every permutation can be uniquely decomposed as the product of three factors. So in the first uh, factor, each non-trivial cycle of, of this uh, factor Taiwan contains exactly one element of A, of the set A. Uh, the factor Tau two, uh, tau two, two is uh, formed by the cycles of Tau, which permute only the indices of in B. And it commutes with Tau one and Tau three. And finally, Tau three permutes only the indices in A. Of course, uh, there is a similar uh, decomposition if you exchange uh, the, the uh, use of A and B, but in fact, A and B are not symmetric uh, uh, because B, uh, tau two collects all the cycles in, in, uh, uh, of tau with the entries in B, but tau three is different because uh, uh, it, it involves uh, all, also the, the elements uh, of the, of, uh, the, which appear in the cycle of Taiwan. Uh, so this is uh, a simple fact, but uh, interpreting this simple fact in several different steps, you know, uh, one uh, succeeds in proving that uh, from the basic anti-symmetrizer, apply all these uh, operations, one first obtains all these non-commutative uh, answer identities, and finally one uh, obtains uh, the theorem, which I mentioned before. Okay, we have to do these steps before, that uh, uh, these two identities generate uh, in this uh, sense, uh, all our tensor identities. Okay, um, I'm sorry, maybe this was a bit too technical, but I thought that uh, since this is a, a new, something new, which, uh, it's probably of some interest. Uh, I decided to do this and I terminate by giving you a picture of the beautiful city of Urbino where I hope to, <laughs> to be able to come sooner or later. <laughs> okay, here I finished in this, this way. Thank you very much, Professor Brochesi. Okay. It will be the occasion to have you in Urbino. I hope so. <laughs> I am vaccinated anyway. <laughs> Are there questions, remarks about the talk? Pardon? No questions or remarks. If not, many thanks again to Professor Claudio Procesi for uh, his uh, nice and interesting talk. And to all of you to be here, of course. Okay. Thank you very much. Grazie mille. Grazie, Professor. Yeah. Ci sia occasione di averla Urbino quanto prima. Magari. Quando si sta davanti alla lavagna si riesce anche a interagire un po' meglio. E così da, parlando davanti a un computer non si riesce a capire nulla di, di cosa succede <ride> negli ascoltatori. Sì, non si ha l'idea di chi è davanti. Certo, chiaro. Sì. Bene, grazie. Allora, arrivederci. 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 Grazie a tutti, buon pomeriggio. Pomeriggio a tutti. Arrivederci. Arrivederci, arrivederci a tutti. Grazie. Arrivederci, buonasera.
Arrivederci, grazie, buona serata. Arrivederci. Arrivederci, buonasera. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.